Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Basil Considine and I'm here from the ACU Online Writing Center. And today we were going to talk about writing about business leadership theories. This is one of our lunch hour webinars. So we'll be going through some of the preliminary stuff in a abbreviated format so we can finish the main content and have you on your way before the lunch break is over. If you'd like to hear more details about the Writing Center and the services that we offer, watch any of our webinars, either on the Writing Center website or on our YouTube channel, and you'll hear more detail about that. But in short, we do not charge for services. We work with students in just about every online program at ACU, and we are happy to look at drafts and provide feedback and input at any stage of the writing process. Whether you're just getting started reading material and wondering, how to begin with an assignment, whether you have an outline that you want to see, does this hit the main points, or if you have a partial or complete draft that you'd like feedback on. Students can come to the Writing Center up to two times per week, and we also have a service with tutor.com where you get 10 hours of free tutoring support from them. More information about that and other services can be found on the Online Writing Center website, and again, you can watch any of our videos there or on YouTube to get a more detailed spiel. The general progression is if you want to get feedback on a paper, you schedule an appointment at WC Online. By the time your appointment rolls around, you upload a copy of your paper. So you don't need that copy ready when you are making the appointment, just by the time the appointment rolls around. And then we will send you feedback via email, generally within 24 hours. If you're asking on Mother Day's Mother's Day weekend, uh, you know, might spend some time with the family, but we'll make sure to get back to you in good time. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. We have a number of webinars coming up that you might be interested in, especially if you are new to one of our programs and have not been using APA style or have not used APA 7th edition, the current version that's only been used at ACU for about a year now. So if that applies to you. We have a webinar that you might be interested in this evening, 6 to 7 p.m., Introduction to APA 7th Edition. And then we have a variety of other webinars, a small selection of which I have included on the calendar here. The complete calendar can be found on the Writing Center website. And with that, let us move into our main goals for today, which are to understand the uh, week one leadership theories assignment in BUSA 530, and to review core principles for outlining the assignment. So let's start by looking at the assignment itself. So th this assignment asks you to take certain readings about models and frameworks and relate them to the leadership theories in which they are classified, which we have trait theories, behavioral theories, and contingency or fit theories. And by the way, if you are frantically taking notes, no need. We are happy to send you a copy of the slide deck. We always post the slide decks to the Writing Center website. But if you RSVP'd for the webinar, uh, you get a link to the recording and a copy of the slide deck automatically. And if you didn't, but you'd still like that, just type your email address in the chat window and I will add you to the list that gets that. So again, we have trait theories, behavioral theories, and contingency or fit theories. And these are the broader categories in which you're going to be asked to group and classify the models and frameworks that are discussed. Now, this assignment specifically asks you to provide a definition of leadership, a concise one, no more than 40 words. That's probably going to be around three lines of text and to argue for one of the three leadership perspectives or general theory families that we mentioned above and give supporting evidence for that in your argument. Provide an example of a leader who is well explained by your theory, including specific events or actions, and this can be historical or someone contemporary, and explain what that theory tells you today about your own leadership going forward. And this is basically setting up a whole series of assignments that will be asking you to apply these principles to yourself and to your scenario. And whether you're joining us from the MBA program 
or whether you are in the education leadership program, this is going to be a theme in many assignments. It's not just studying these things in abstract, it's really digging into what will this look like in practice? How is this going to affect real life situations that you see right now or that you anticipate coming? And it does say about your own leadership. So if you are looking at one of these theories and saying, well, I really don't agree with that. I don't think that that uh, really applies well to me. I would say, do not pick that one or you will be undermining your own argument. Now you don't need to use the specific uh, details that have been used to align it with some other historical figure. Uh, and just because, you know, contingency or fit theories have been applied to Adolf Hitler does not mean that you want to make that same comparison. But there you may find, oh, yes, the de general idea of being very suitable to the setting, to the demands of the time. Certainly, you can make that argument about many people today. All right. And the instructions also state that the whole paper should be approximately 500 words in length formatted in APA style and include citations and references. So how long is 500 words? Well, that's about two pages double-spaced. If you're using our APA course paper template, which I highly recommend, that will take a you know, maximum like two pages and a quarter if you have a lot of really long words, but really you're going to end up right around two pages in length if because 12-point font, double-spaced, one-inch margins, that's around what will fit in there. Now, there's a little room to go longer because in the instruction says your response beyond the initial 40 word definition should be approximately 500. So if you're thinking maximum, I'd say 540 is definitely doable. You might be able to stretch it to 600, but I wouldn't go longer than that because just looking at the length of the paper, it's noticeable that when you've gone beyond that. But a little bit over two pages should not be a problem. And we'll see that the rubric lays out all of these things in detail and assigns points to it. So make sure you've got that definition and that it's under 40 words, see, because that definition is 20% of the grade. You need to have that argument for one of the leadership perspectives uh, in general argument, and that's another 20%. You need to provide the example of someone who the theory explains what they, they did and their success well, another 20% applying it to yourself and your position, another 20. And then the rest is, okay, ha have you spell checked it? Are these sentence make sense? And is it an APA style and within the maximum around two pages length? All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So how do we go from those instructions to outlining the assignment? Now, outlines are a really important thing to do. And often our students who are coming from working for a while will arrive in a program and think, well, I don't outline when I'm at work. I just, I know this, I do it, and they'll start writing. And that works for some people, but often it ends up taking more time and involving writing stuff that you then need to cut for reasons of length and focus. Because if you are free writing, you probably know a lot about the topic because you're interested in enrolling in a graduate program about it. Now, if you take the assignment instructions and you make a detailed outline that lists all the things that you need to write and includes guidance about approximately how long you should be writing on it, you can view this more like a specification list from a client. Oh, we need a product that does this thing, that thing, and that thing that has these properties. You know, if you're building something for an airplane, and you turn it in and it weighs three times as much, that's a problem. If it's not the right size, screw, that's also a problem. So similarly for this and other graduate level assignments, make sure that you approach the assignment description and the rubric as giving a specific set of what your instructor wants you to do. Now, occasionally you will have some assignments that uh, have more latitude for you to add more other things, this is just a two page paper, so you want to make sure that you do everything that's required first. 
I do strongly recommend, if you haven't already, grabbing a copy of our APA course paper template. I'm going to type a link here. You can download that and it saves a lot of time with the setup and formatting. If you are opening up that Google Docs folder, you'll see that there's more than one thing there. You want the one that's called ACU APA 7th edition template. And if you right click on that or control click on it with a Mac, just select download and you'll download a copy to your computer and be all set and ready to go. By the way, I do encourage following along with your own outline as we do this. You can, of course, watch the recording later and create it, but I find that uh, a lot of people learn by doing and remember from going through the exercise. So, so what should go into this outline? Well, we want to start by subdividing the tasks because we want to develop an outline that gives a blueprint of what you need to research and write, including a rough idea of the detail. Why? Well, in part, it makes it easier and faster to test ideas, and if you need to move them around to restructure it. Restructuring is probably not going to be a huge concern in this paper because it's so short, but when you're writing a 10-page paper, it can make a huge difference in how material makes sense. It's a great way of getting feedback from an instructor who perhaps does not have time to read the whole thing, but can look at your outline and say, yes, that looks good, makes sense, you're in the, going in the right direction. And the more specific and detailed that you make your outline, the easier and faster it is you to be doing your research and writing. And you can take this to the level where you put in place where saying, oh, I need a supporting citation for this kind of claim, or I need evidence for this. And then when you go and do the reading for that week, you can keep in mind, oh, I need this. I have a list of citations that I'm going to need. And when I find that, I can just copy it in directly rather than having to read, outline, then go back and reread again, looking for those specific things. And it's also a great way if you're in a job where you're frequently interrupted, as uh, many of our students are juggling work and kids sometimes due to the pandemic at home um, at the same time. And it provides a roadmap where you have five minutes alone. Okay, great. You can develop a couple sentences and move towards completion. So again, I strongly recommend that you create a draft outline before you do the reading and mark it up with a list of anything you need and speaking of citations and references, something to keep in mind different from many other styles. APA style requires that all published sources that you cite be listed in your reference section. I say published meaning someone else can retrieve them. So if you went and interviewed your coworker, you would cite that, but it's not a published source, so it wouldn't end up in your references section. But if you have something listed in your reference section, it must be cited in the body of your paper. And as you start doing up your outline, once you put a citation in there, add it to your reference section as well. So before we move into the details of the outline, I thought it would be good to spend a little time looking at some of these citations because not everyone has run into these and had to cite them in APA 7th edition, where a couple things have changed from how they were before. So let's talk about that first source here. Introduction to Leadership, Concepts and Practice, fifth edition. So this is something of the course textbook. It's written by P.G. Nordhaus. And uh, we have some common elements that we're going to need for just about all of our references. Those are in order, who wrote it, when was it published, what's it called, and how to find it. In this case, the how to find it is, oh, we're looking for a book by Sage Publications. This is a single author book, which means no matter what chapter you are drawing on, it's still going to be the same 
author date North House 2021. It's going to be the same reference. If it was a multi-author book where different chapters had different authors, you'd have a different case, but this is a single author book, so just as you see. All right, so what about one of those online magazine articles? There's the seven great, sorry, seven things great leaders always do, but mere managers always fear. Well, we have a, a couple pieces of information we can spot here. Inc. is the name of the magazine. The title is Seven Things Great Leaders Always Do, But Mere Managers Always Fear. And it has a subtitle, Are You a Great Leader or a Mere Manager? Here's How to Tell the Difference. The author is Bill Murphy Jr. And if we scroll all the way down on the page, we'll find that there is a publication date. They happen to give us the year, the month, and the day. Great. So what does that look like? Well, if we are citing this, it's just Murphy 2014. The reference, we do include the first initial, the B. We include the junior. And because this is a magazine, we include not just the year, but also the month and day. And you can see the title is listed out. That's in sentence case. So the same way you'd format a sentence. This is slightly different from how it was on the masthead, but in APA style, we take newspaper and magazine and journal article titles. And when you put them in your reference list, they're converted to sentence case, as you see here. And then the, how do you find it? Well, that's on the Inc. website at this specific URL. So, all right, let's look at another one. So something that you will be doing a lot of in this class is citing articles from Harvard Business Review. It's a great resource. A couple things you should know about it. Harvard Business Review is not actually a peer reviewed journal. So if you have an assignment that requires you to get a peer reviewed journal article, this comes up a lot in the leadership class, this will not meet that requirement. Now, if it's just have of a source to cite, that's fine, but it's not a peer reviewed journal article. So just be aware of that. If you're looking at older uh, versions of Harvard Business Review, you'll find that they have volumes and issue numbers and stuff. And as they progress into an online magazine format, the more recent things are now treated much the same as the article we were looking at earlier. So in this case, it's, we have an article by Jay Michel. It's published on August 22nd, 2014. It's called Great Leadership Isn't About You, published in Harvard Business Review at that URL. And if you're working with a YouTube video, we want to make sure that we are citing the channel name as is the case with this source. This is the channel is Center for Faith and Work. It's published May 18th, 2012. The video is called Tim Keller, Why Faith Matters. We include that note in square brackets that it's a video, say it's on YouTube, and then have the link. Now, something you'll note here, because YouTube is really a publishing platform rather than a publication name, you'll see that the italics are swapped compared to the previous example. Previous example had Harvard Business Review, the name of the magazine, italicized. This one, because YouTube is really just a platform rather than a publisher or publication, and it the video itself, Tim Keller, Web Faith Matters, gets the italics. If it's something that's on a private platform, like the TED Talks, then the format is very similar. In this case, if you were to look at this video, you would see they only list the month and the year. They don't give the day. And that's fine. We only provide the information that they gave. So 2011 comma November is just fine. All right, at this point, we are going to switch over to Microsoft Word document and I'm going to show you the outlining that I was telling you about. And we will uh, finish with some time to spare because I know there are always many things that need to be done during the lunch break.
right. As you can see, I have shared a copy of the AP course paper template. A common question, if you haven't been using a lot of the markup functions in Word, is how do you get rid of all the marginal comments? And so if you're in the ribbon up top, if we move over to the right to review, you'll see that there's this button here, delete. And I can select delete, delete all comments and document, and then they're all gone immediately. Big time saver versus hunting them down individually. All right, well, you can fill in the name of the, the paper and everything. This assignment doesn't require an abstract, so you can just go ahead and delete that. And uh, I'm just gonna start filling things in here. So when I am looking through this, I'm going to start with a very basic, simple title. What do you need there? Well, you just need to be specific. In this case, what is the assignment? Well, it is the leadership theories assignment. So I'm just going to call this leadership theories. No, you know, I'm going to call it applied leadership theories because it ends up being about me. And I'll go ahead and I'll add that there. And I'll just delete all these placeholders. And now I'm ready to go. I have a blank document and I can just start outlining. Now, if you are uh, working on this with the uh, at home, you're probably going to be starting with just having the web page for the assignment or the assignment module up on your computer. So let's look at that. All right, and it's not a bad thing if you just go ahead and grab the whole assignment description, copy that, and then head over to Word. Now, if you just paste it, you'll find that it's in different font and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and select match destination formatting. And now I don't need to worry about font sizes being different or the parents changing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start deleting things that I don't need to cover here. So, all right, your, your readings include various, that's introductory stuff. I'm just gonna cross that out. And then, you know, this is a good review, but I don't actually need to write anything on that. So we cross that out too. And so we end up with a much smaller list of things. All right, cross that out, cross that out. All right, so first item, define leadership using no more than 40 words. All right, so just looking at this, you know with some confidence that this is going to be something to the effect of, I define leadership as. Now, APA style does allow you to use I statements. You just don't want to overuse them. So it's not a problem if you say leadership is, and then fill it in from there. The difference here is the first one is saying, this is how I personally define leadership. The second is saying, I am presenting or distilling other people's definitions of leadership. Now, either is fine. And the second one, can feel more objective, but either is fine as far as APA style is. Now this next prompt says, okay, uh, argue for what are the three leadership perspectives? And there's this additional instruction, decide which of these you find most useful and explain why you chose the one you did. And then this is more formatting here. So 
looking at this, I now have a pretty specific uh, example here of what I should be writing. And looking at this with this other thing, okay, argue for one of the three, provide an example, explain. This is going to be around, roughly speaking, this is going to be around 170 or so words each, just splitting that evenly. Uh, if you're wondering, that's uh, somewhere around two thirds, three quarters of a page. So probably this is going to be two, one paragraph OF for the, um, the definition. One paragraph max. And probably two paragraphs max for the other ones. So while you could spend a very long time talking about yourself, we know because it's, it's going to be around 500 words maximum, that we shouldn't spend too much time on that. Okay, now that I've clarified that for myself, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these crossouts so I have a more clear and concise idea of what should be done. And let's say that I arbitrarily decide that I am going to go ahead and I'm going to write about contingency theories. And the prompt asks to state what you find the most useful in understanding leadership. Okay, well, the best way to answer that is to answer it directly using the language there. Now, if you're in relationship counseling, they ask you to reflect, to tell someone what you have heard so that they know you're listening and that you're understanding. It's not dissimilar here. You might uh, make the case that to make sure that the other person knows that you are both paying attention and that you are responding to that exact thing, you want to use the language there. So if the instructions here say, Decide which of those you find most useful. Oh, I find oops, the contingency fit theory of leadership to be most useful in understanding leadership. And then you give supporting examples and other ways of explaining why you chose this. All right, and looking at this like, okay, well, that example is, well, I think I want at least two examples of that. Um, so, okay, well, let's maybe talk about how I've applied this. And, uh, you know, I think I can probably talk about how, how uh, this has been explained. And pretty soon you start seeing, okay, well, if it's going to be paragraphs, uh, you know, two max, then we start seeing, oh, well, this is really the first paragraph here. And this is the second paragraph. And anything else that I add can group into that. All right, so look at this next one. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to explain the leader, is to, to, to state the name of the leader. And it says, oh, example, at least two specific events or actions. And because of the structure of this, you know, we, it's, uh, you could either have one paragraph about how the leaders well explained generally, and then go into another paragraph to have both examples, or I'd suggest including the discussion, the first example in the first paragraph, and then having the next one 
in a following up paragraph. All right, now continuing through this, we have the explain what the theory tells you today about your own leadership. All right, so what does that mean? Is this in terms of actions, beliefs, behavior modifications? For example, uh, a habit that I have is that if I see an email that I do not want to reply to, my inclination is to go and work on other things instead. This is perhaps a sort of procrastination and some people manage this very product productively, but uh, it, is this the best habit? Well, no, you might look at applying a theory and find a similar habit in yourself that you say, oh, well, you know, I, I'm aware of this. The theory says it's really important to do that. I'm not quite there. And so I want to change this thing about it. Now, there are a couple different ways you could organize this. This could be one paragraph. It could be two paragraphs. You know, one separate one for applying to yourself and then another for your job. And then having the explanation in a separate paragraph. Uh, or you could do a kind of interleave thing. Oh, uh, looking at this, I see X. This suggests that I should be working on this thing. You know, that kind of back and forth. That's up to you, so long as you cover all those things. I would say, make sure to look and ask critically, what can I change? What should I change? All right, uh, continuing on here, we find that's the end of our outline, actually. And uh, that is as far as you probably want to go, except to say, hold on, now that I know what the general content is, where are the places that I should be looking in my reading to do that? And this is a good time to go ahead and review that reading list. So if we were to go look at the assignment, it doesn't list the specific ones, but we know this is week one. So we go to that module and looking through here, week one readings and resources. If you are looking at things that you might want to change, you can do a targeted bit of reading and say, you know what, I want some examples of things I might be able to change. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read that seven things great leaders always do, but your managers always fear and see if there's something that I want or need to change about this. And if we see, oh, uh, I, I realized that uh, I've actually been doing things because, you know, I like it when my employees like me. Uh, lots is great. But I've realized that they're uh, not all coming in on time, for example. And so I've seen, okay, I, I need to earn their respect and have them respect me. So that's an example of you might say, well, okay, I, I need an example of that. Here's a resource that looks like it's going to have that particular thing. And so I can go ahead and add that now. All right, so if that happens to be you, then I'd say go ahead and head off to that Word document and I'm gonna say, okay, uh, need to earn respect, I'm just leaving a note for myself. And then, oh, what was that source again? Well. That was the Murphy article. And that is uh, published in 2014. And since I'm going to be having it there, I might as well go ahead and go to the references section and add that now since I know that I'm going to have to reference it since I'm going to cite it. And so, all right, go ahead and I'll add that. Great, and so I don't need to worry about the formatting. I took some time before I went and did the full reading and writing to make sure I got that right. And okay, well, let's head back to the 
assignment here. And see, what else do we have here? Uh, vocation, career, and job. Oh, so maybe part of what you're doing is you want to shift what is happening. Uh, perhaps one of the reasons that you entered this program is that you have a particular job or role that you want to move up to or train up to. And so that could be part of it, of what you are writing about for things you want to change. And so you might go to this article here, which is in the Christian Science Monitor, uh, which is really a, uh, these days, it used to function more as a newspaper, now it's more of a magazine. So we'd cite it the same way as before. And look at, through this and say, uh, you know what? I am trying to uh, evolve what I am doing and pursue a career. All right, and so say, okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and cite this one. So, all right, gonna go ahead and uh, add a citation for that. And what do I need there? I need my author last name and I need the publication year. And now I need to go ahead and add it here. Now, one of the virtues of outlining for this, is this is all work that has to be done anyway, but it's also word that if you're tired or you know you're going to be interrupted, you can and do this and not worry about losing that train of thought. Because if you're just doing one thing at a time, you can absolutely work on that reference list and fill this in. Okay, ham T period, uh, that was in 2010. Uh, that was, it's a magazine. So we're gonna put in the month and the day. All right, what's it called? And just uh, copy and paste that. Now, if you get the formatting changed like that, go to this little clipboard button here and change to match destination formatting. And there, the only thing we need to do now is remove that bold. Great. Vocation, career, and job, which do you have? This is published in the Christian Science Monitor. And then we need the link. All right, and that's all we needed for that reference. And so you saw how fast I was able to write that because I was just working on one thing at a time. So you can work on your outline, you can develop it, you can populate a citations like this and say, you know what, I'm got, uh, I've got five minutes left on my lunch break. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in that reference and then I'll know it's done and I don't have to come back to it and I won't be losing credit on it because I made sure that I added all of my sources that I cited to my reference list. Speaking of uh, letting you, you know, have some time during the lunch break, this concludes the main part of today's webinar. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have.